Today in our 2016 GMC Sierra 2500 HD, we'll be having a look at and installing the Firestone Ride Right Red Label Extreme Duty Air Helper Springs, part number F2702. In conjunction with the lift spacers for Firestone Ride Right Air Helper Springs for vehicles with a two inch lift, part number F2366. Now here's what our airbags look like installed. These airbags will give us a load leveling capacity of up to 7,500 pounds. They will not increase our gross vehicle weight rating by 7,500 pounds. They just will maintain our ride quality and ride height with 7,500 pounds of weight in the bed. You'll want to consult with your owner's manual of your truck and see if the vehicle is capable of towing or hauling that much weight before you attempt to do so. You don't want to cause damage to your vehicle. These airbags support anywhere between 5 and 150 PSI of air pressure. Unlike a lot of other competitors' airbags in the market, these are actually designed to be able to have the rear axle fully suspended when the truck is raised in the air for service. Other airbags from different manufacturers sometimes require the axle to be supported and not have the full weight of it hanging down because it could damage the airbag itself. On these, you don't have to worry about that, so there is no special precautions you need to take when you have your truck in for service, such as a tire rotation. Okay, the first thing we wanna do is get some measurements and see where our vehicle's ride height is. Now, our vehicle does have a suspension lift on it, so this will affect the measurements compared to your vehicle if it's factory. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we'll measure from the center line of our wheel up to our wheel arch right here and record that measurement. Right now, we have no weight in the bed of our truck. Okay, so we're at 45 and a half inches here in the rear and about 43 and a half in the front. Okay, now we have a substantial amount of weight in the bed of the truck. This will simulate carrying a heavy load or towing a heavy trailer like a gooseneck or a fifth wheel with a heavy pin weight. We'll double check our measurements and see where we stand. Okay, we're at 43 and a half inches right now. That means we came down about two inches in the back. So our back end's going down and our front end's raising. Okay, we're about 44 inches in the front, which means we came up about a half inch in the front. So what this is doing is when our back end comes down and our front end comes up, our headlight angle's changing we're getting less weight over our front tires, which means we have less steering and stability, also less braking performance to help slow us down. Also, our front tires are starting to camber out like this. This is what's called positive camber. This will cause more tire wear on the outside edge of your tire. Now, all of these things combined, we could blind incoming drivers with the headlight angle being more in their face versus down towards the road. We'll have decreased handling, decreased stability, decreased braking ability. All in all, not a safe ride. Okay, now that we have our airbags installed and our weight back in the bed of our truck, we'll see if we're back at factory ride height. All right, as you can see, we're about at 45 and a half inches again. Okay, we're at 43 and a half inches in the front again, which is back to where our truck was with no weight in the back. Okay, now we'll take it out on our test course. On the left side of the screen, you'll see what it was like without the airbags installed with the factory suspension. And on the right-hand side of the screen, you'll see it with the airbags installed. On the left-hand side of the screen, you can see how unstable it is when we're making evasive maneuvers, go around corners, or just making simple turns. And you can also see when we're going over bumps or going over uneven surfaces, how unstable it is and how much rebound there is in our suspension. On the right-hand side of the screen, you can see how much more stable it is when we're going around the corners, doing the evasive maneuvering, how much less body roll there is. Also, when we're going over the bumps, you'll notice how much more stable it is and how much less rebound there is in the suspension. It's letting the suspension do its job and it's providing us a much smoother ride. Now that we've gone over some features, we'll show you how to get it installed. All right, here we are underneath our truck. We went ahead and removed our spare tire just to give us a little more room to work when we're filming. You don't need to have the spare tire removed when you're installing this. First thing we need to do is locate our bump stop right here. We need to remove this. So we'll just take a screwdriver, prop up, pull down, and remove. Okay, now we'll take our upper frame bracket and our U-bolt and slide it in position just like that. Okay, now we'll take our frame bracket here, slide it around our bump stop bracket. Make sure it sits flush against the bump stop. Hold it tight against the bottom. Then slide our U-bolt into position. And through the holes. 
All right, now that we have our bracket in place with the U-bolt against the bump stop holding it in position, we'll take our strap, slide it over our studs, place on a flat washer over each U-bolt, and we'll throw it on our nylon lock nuts, and then we'll snug those down. Use a 916 socket while we're tightening these down. Make sure we go somewhat evenly. And then we'll torque them to the amount specified in the instructions. Now, this part is gonna be different for most applications. The spacer block here is not included with our kit. This is sold separately as a kit. It's part number F2366. It's a two inch spacer designed for vehicles that have a suspension lift on them up to two inches. This way you're not stretching your airbags out. Our vehicle has a lift on it, so that's why we're using this block. So we'll flip our airbag over here, take a lock washer and bolt that comes with our spacer kit, center it over here and drop the lock washer and bolt down, and then we'll tighten it up. A flex head ratcheting wrench is really handy in this application. Okay, now we'll take our lower frame bracket and our pan head bolt here, which has Loctite already on it, and get it in there. Now I wanna point out, our fitting here is pushing away from the side that's uneven and not flat. We'll just have this finger tight for right now so we can make our adjustments later and mark where it needs to be. Now we'll take our fitting and we'll screw it into the top here and we'll tighten it down until the thread sealing on it engages. Okay, that's engaged more than halfway, so that's good. Okay, now we'll raise our airbag assembly up into place. Our large stud here will go through the large hole, and our alignment pin will go through either the forward or the back hole here, depending on which gives us the best fit. Okay, I like the look of it going through the back hole. So now we'll take our star lock washer here Go down over the stud and secure our nut. We're just gonna do this finger tight so we can make our alignment marks. Okay, we made a couple alignment marks here where everything's sitting nice and straight. So now we can lower down our assembly and tighten down that pan head bolt on the bottom so that our marks line up with that and then we can reinstall our assembly. Okay, we made sure our alignment marks that we made line up. So we'll snug down this bolt fully to the amount specified in the instructions. And we can reinstall our assembly now. Okay, with this nut finger tight now, we can tighten it down and torque it to the specifications found in the instructions. Okay, now we'll drop down our carriage bolts, making sure they go between our axle and the brake line. So one on each side. Okay, now we'll take our axle strap and install it onto our bolts that we drop down. Place on a flat washer and a nylon lock nut. Okay, now we'll take our final U-bolt, stick it between our wheel and our suspension here in the axle. Make sure we don't pinch our ABS wire here and we'll bring it into place through the holes right here. Now if it through both sides, we'll place on a flat washer and then another nylon lock nut. Make sure we do the same on both sides. Okay, now we'll work on tightening down our nuts. Okay, with all of our nuts tightened up now, we'll torque them the amount specified in the instructions. We wanna make sure we tighten these in an even manner. So we do a little bit on one, and go to an opposite one, and do the same. Okay, we went ahead and repeated the same process for the passenger side, 
in order to get our airbag assembly in place, with one minor exception. We installed our heat shield here to protect our airbag from the exhaust in between the bottom of our top mounting bracket here and between the top of our airbag assembly. There's a large round hole, it just sits on top of it, goes into place, and you secure it with your hardware at top. So we need to find a place where we can mount our airline fittings. And we also need to make the decision at this point if we're going to have one fitting or two fittings. If we have two fittings, we can fill up each of our airbags separately to help stabilize heavier loads that are on one side of the truck. Now we can mount them with our no drill bracket here, which you can attach to your hitch with the included zip ties. Or for a cleaner look that's higher up with no ground clearance issues, we can install them in our bumper by drilling a hole. I'm gonna put them in front of our license plate lights right here in this area. However, our customer is putting in a compressor at a later date, and the compressor is a single stage, which means it can only control one path of air. So I'm only gonna be using one fitting. I will tie both of our airbags together with a T fitting. I've already verified that there's nothing in this area that I'm drilling into that's going to get damaged. So I'll drill our 5 16th of an inch diameter hole. Now we'll take our air valve, undo the nut, place on one of our 5 16ths flat washers, reach up from behind the bumper, stick it through the hole, place on another 5 16ths washer, and reinstall our nut. And then I'll hold it in place in the back side of a wrench and tighten down the nut here with a socket. Once we have that snugged up, we can start routing our plumbing. All right, so we'll take our airline tubing here. We'll use an airline tubing cutter, which we have available on our website as part number F9009 to ensure that we have a straight, clean cut on the end. Just take a little bit off. Take our tubing. Push it straight down into our fitting until it stops. And we'll pull back to make sure it's secure. Passenger side is a little bit different. We have this protective heat shielding here that we're going to slide on over our tubing. This will help protect it from the exhaust. We have two pieces that come with our kit. We'll use both of them and we'll push into our fitting just like we did on the other side. Make sure it's secure. Okay, once it's in place, we have our heat shielding right here down to our nozzle. Okay, our driver's side, we just have leaving our valve, secured it with a zip tie around this wiring harness, and it comes out right here at the center part of our cross member here in our frame. I'll show you the passenger side now. Okay, our passenger side one, we have it secured here to a wiring harness for the ABS sensor. It goes across our cross tube here in the frame, and it ends right next to where our driver's side one ends. Where our lines both end, this is where we're going to install our T fitting to combine them into one. Works the same way as the others. You just push in until it stops and pull that. Make sure it's secure. Make sure we have a clean cut again. Now I'll measure off how much we're going to need. Cut off the excess and plug it into a fitting. Now our line that goes from the inflation valve, we just went above our spare tire carrier here and then teed into our fitting. Now that all of our connections have been made, we can add air to our system and check for leaks. All right, now how we're gonna check for leaks is quite simple. We'll use some soapy water and spray where our air lines go into fittings and check for any bubbles. If we see bubbles, that means we have a leak. If we don't, that means we're good. Okay, with no leaks anywhere, 
That means we're good to go and we're ready to use our airbags. And that completes our look at and installation of the Firestone Ride Right Red Label Extreme Duty Air Helper Springs, part number F2702, in conjunction with the lift spacers for the Firestone Ride Right Air Helper Springs for vehicles with a two inch lift, part number F2366 on our 2016 GMC Sierra 2500.